Hey guys, Dave the MMP back on Yola. Uh, I've been working on navigation and um, navigation seems to be a big thing. I mean, I'm gonna be traveling all over the world on this boat. Uh, I'm gonna have double redundancy, so I'm gonna run OpenCPN on a Raspberry Pi. I'll probably have a chart plotter um, just as a backup. And um, my depth sounder, uh, I've got a Lawrence uh, depth sounder and it also has charting on it too. Uh, I can use Navionics on my tablet or my phone if I've got cell service. Um, a lot of people uh, make a plan with Navionics and then download the maps. And then once you go offshore, you don't have cell service, but you've got all the maps downloaded for the area where you're going. Uh, so that's a good, uh, good option. And a lot of people in the Caribbean are doing this and people all over the world are doing this with Navionics. So uh, I'm starting to build uh, an enclosure for my Raspberry Pi and I'm going to put all of my uh, navigational equipment in this one waterproof box. Um, I've noticed in the one quarter berth where uh, I plan on sleeping, um, there's a little bit of a water weep that I've been chasing coming off the bulkhead. Um, if it happens on the other side, I don't want it to uh, kill my Raspberry Pi. Uh, I know a lot of people have put Raz Pis on boats and put them in uh, like Tupperware containers and things like that, but I want to be able to make sure it's waterproof, put the proper connectors on it, be able to get into it properly. Okay, here's, so here's the quarter berth that I plan on putting uh, the navigation. I've already got uh, a whole bunch of electrical stuff in here. My main switches are in here. My Victron gear is in here. And this enclosure, this big white enclosure, is the one that I'm going to put my Raspberry Pi in. And uh, I'll end up having the cables come out of the end there and just plug into it. Um, my, the controller for my um, tiller uh, actuator is down there. Uh, I've got a Pelagic Autopilot on this boat. The only thing I'm not super happy about is this tray here is the primary storage for the quarter berth and I'm gonna lose some storage space, but I'm gonna put it down there as far as I can just to make sure I reserve the most amount of space I can up here for this shelf. I mean, I'm I'm both basically using it for Yanmar spare parts right now and some baskets and extra parts down here. I mean, I don't expect anybody to sleep in this side. Um, they could if they really wanted to, but I'm basically using this as the technical compartment now. All right, so this is what my enclosure looks like. Uh, right now I've got the uh, DC converter, so 12 volts in from the boat, and that gives me 5 volts to power the Pi. Uh, the Pi's already got a cooler on it with a heat sink, and I've got this breakout. Now this is a uh, breakout for the GPIO, um, and I want all the wires to go into the wireway. Um, there's another way to do this where you just put it as a hat on top of the pie, um, but I think that's going to have an issue with cooling. The other thing that I'm probably going to want to do is put um, a daisy hat on top of the pie for AIS. Uh, I've got a little blower up here. I'm probably going to cut a little hole, put a little... Uh, deflector on there so I can get the heat out of the enclosure. Um, it could be that this enclosure is so large uh, that I don't really need an internal fan. I do have a little controller to go up here to control that fan with a sensor so it'll actually only run uh, if the enclosure gets too hot. But I kind of think that the size of the enclosure, I might get some heat off of this guy. Um, and the nice thing about that is it'll keep the moisture out of this enclosure for the pie, so I don't end up uh, having issues with moisture inside the panel. Uh, that might be an issue in the tropics, so uh, I might have to keep this thing powered all the time uh, just to keep the moisture out of this enclosure. But uh, the lid on this enclosure has an O-ring to keep it all dry, and I'm going to put uh, proper connectors on the inside here that'll bring out the HDMI, the power, uh, and all of the other connections, the USB connections that I need for my GPS puck and all those kinds of things. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. Um, all the wires from the, uh, the breakout, uh, because there's, uh, uh, I2C sensors and then there's, uh, a sensor for the, uh, flux gate compass and the heel and trim. Um, and the wind sensor and the depth sensor will all end up getting connected to this guy so that I can, uh, program signal K to get that all on my display. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is I'll probably end up getting rid of this depth sounder um, or maybe this guy uh, and put a little touch screen up here and when I'm in the cockpit I can just swing this thing into the cockpit and you'll be able to see it from the cockpit. So uh, 
you know, I don't know if this is going to be strong enough. Um, I might have to put an actual um, display arm on it, kind of like what you would have on a small TV at home. So, all right, this is what my navigation area looks like from the cockpit and my chart plotter and my depth sounder. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up, like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next week. Thanks a lot.